Today we're going back to my roots, loss prevention. And normally I'm telling loss prevention stories, crazy shoplifter stories, but today's kind of a story and just a little bit of training for your loss prevention professionals out there. Let's get to it. What up everyone, it's George Langebeer with Silverhammer Surveillance. Here at Silverhammer Surveillance, we are security and smart home specialists. Well, that all started in my loss prevention career. I was a loss prevention manager at a regional retailer. You look at some of our old videos that kind of explain what loss prevention is. So I caught crooks. I used surveillance equipment to do it. And that's kind of what got me into Silverhammer Surveillance. I decided to go out on my own and help other homeowners and other business owners protect their stuff like I was protecting the stuff at that retailer. So through that, we branched into other things like the smart home because I'm a huge tech geek, as I've told you before. But it all came from my loss prevention career. So check out some of our other videos on some of my crazy shoplifter stories. But like I said in the intro, today's kind of a combination of both. My story and a little bit of training for ULPs out there. Today we're talking about the quick change. And the quick change is evil. It's pure evil to a loss prevention person because it's really hard to catch and it's really hard to prove. And it usually involves somebody at your store being victimized, almost like a robbery, which sucks even worse. But it's pretty damn close because you feel pretty, pretty violated and you feel pretty victimized. So we're going to talk about a, what a quick change is. And then I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit of a story of a quick change pair that were hitting our stores and how they tortured me, but how I got a little bit of redemption. So let's talk about what a quick change is. When you're talking about a loss prevention manager or a loss prevention professional or a loss prevention agent, there's several different things we do. We're kind of in charge of everybody's safety and security. So we watch out for accidents, employees and customers, but we also watch for thieves, both employees and customers. And we try to catch them and do everything we can to get them, get our stuff back and get restitution for whatever they stole from us or cash or whatever it may be. But when you're talking about the various ways people can steal from you, both customers and employees, you know, you can steal merchandise, you can steal cash, you can scam people with bad checks, you can do all sorts of, we've talked about ORC, check out my video on a couple of my videos on ORC, organized retail crime. Those are kind of an organized group that kind of hits you in different ways. But one of the most frustrating ways a person can steal from a store is it's called a quick change. And it's like, again, I kind of said it, it's, it's very violating because it's hard to catch and it's hard to prove and it usually victimizes a very innocent employee. So what is it? So basically a quick change is when you, you know, it's usually a pair of people and they'll come in and they usually go straight to the registers. And these people travel up and down the interstate. They go from state to state. And that's pretty much all they do all day is, is they do this scam. And they'll hit retailers, they'll hit gas stations, any place that has a cash register, they can hit them. So again, they come in in pairs and one's kind of the lookout and the other one's going to be the actual scammer. So normally what they do, like in the case of our retailer, they'd buy something small, like a pack of gum, candy bar, usually something in the little uh, stands by the registers, anything that's going to just cost a dollar or two. They go to the register, and unfortunately these bastards are sexist, and they usually pick on females, young females, which is stupid because usually females are smarter than men. So I don't know why they think they're going to get away with it. I don't know, maybe they can just be intimidating or what. And normally these are some pretty shady looking dudes, so I guess that's what they try to do is prey on these poor females, but it's usually in general, a newer person and they'll scope out your store to find out the new people, whether it's a female or male, just somebody that started recently. And they usually like younger people because they just don't think they have experience, which a lot of times isn't the case, but that's what they think. So anyway, they, they buy their little item, usually a dollar or two candy bar, gum, whatever it is. And they go to the register and they try to purchase that small item with a big bill like a hundred dollar bill or a 50. And so they give the cashier that bill. They say they want to, you know, they're trying to buy that item. Cashier might look at them kind of funky, but if they're new enough, they're not going to know any better what's about to happen to them. So the thief will hand them the bill and then they'll ask. So let's say the cashier gives them twenties and a five or whatever it is and change. Well, the thief will take that change and they'll ask them for different denominations or they'll just tell them the change is wrong. So they'll, they'll start counting out all this money and they'll start saying, no, you gave me the wrong change or you were supposed to give me this and you're supposed to give me that. And what they do is they start arguing with the cashier, 
trying to confuse them, trying to scam them. And most of the time, these people are so good at it that it happens to you without you even knowing it. And that's where it comes to being hard to prove because normally you can't prove it until the register is counted and you can prove that register is short. And so you can't just go out there and stop somebody, which we want to do as a loss prevention professional. We just want to pounce and go grab them because if we're happy, if we're lucky enough to happen, have it happen in action, which is very rare, you want to just go stop them. But you can't because you technically can't prove it's happening. So again, they're handing the cashier all this money. They keep exchanging money back and forth. They keep saying they get the wrong change. Or let's say they have 20s, they want 10s, whatever it is. But they're just trying to exchange money back and forth with you. And now the cashier, unfortunately, has no idea what's going on. But the thief is usually smart enough to know exactly what's happening, what they've got. And normally these people get away with at least $100. At least. So it's usually 50 or 100 But it can get even higher than that, which is horrible. So again, it's horrible because they prey on young people. It's horrible because they think females you know, are are more easily prone to this, which is stupid because they're not. And then they they just try to scam you. And they're usually in and out. Like I said, the other one is kind of standing behind the other person in in the pair is standing behind them, kind of distracting everybody behind them. And so they just want that focus to be on that cashier and the scammer and the cashier while the other person kind of is either looking out for like a loss prevention person to come out or other customers kind of hip to what's going on and they might say something, but that second person is kind of the lookout. But again, it's always pairs and it's always just quick, 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 and they just want to steal your money. So again, buy a small item with a big bill and just start arguing about change or telling the cashier they're wrong with change. And the poor cashier, you know, the customer is always right. Well, they usually just will get confused right into giving this person money they don't deserve. And nine times out of 10, the cashier will realize it happened once they left and they'll feel violated or they'll feel that sixth feeling in their stomach, but they won't even know why until that drawer is counted the next day, which sucks. So what can you do about it? What, what are you gonna, how are you gonna stop it? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, what I used to do is on day one, when everybody started at our store, we had, they had an orientation and loss prevention was part of their orientation. So I got to hang out with each new hire and kind of give them a little bit what's up with loss prevention and what we expected. So I covered the quick changes in that orientation. I kind of gave them a brief overview of what it is and what they could do about it. So it started with day number one, just kind of giving them the, the knowledge that they exist. So what, can, what do you do when you're actually out there and, and it does happen to you? Well, I got a perfect example of this. My problem with the quick change is it always happened when we weren't there. And it sucked. It just seemed like they knew when loss prevention wasn't there. So it was just, you know, number one, it was hard to prove. It was hard to catch as, as is. But when it's happening, when you're not there, forget about it. So you had to have that training with your cashiers and you had to let them know how to stop it. So sure enough, on one of my days off, we had an attempt. And this was a younger female cashier. I had the person come in and she immediately kind of remembered what I said in her orientation. So she knew that they were buying something small with a big bill. And she just immediately started slowing down. And I know this because I watched the video back and I was so proud of her because you can kind of see the light bulb go off. Hey, this is about to happen to me. And she kind of got that look on her face like, oh no, not today. And and then she just kind of slowed everything down. And then when he tried to do the, the thing with the change, she actually had a little calculator at her register and she pulled out a calculator and she just very slowly calculated everything he was trying to say. And it was amazing because he they want to be in and out. And he got so frustrated and she knew exactly what she was doing. She just knew that she was going to piss them off and they were going to just leave. And it worked. So just by kind of just showing them that she knew what was going on and that it, she wasn't going to be taken advantage of. And all it took was just her pulling out this little calculator that she had in her register and just slowing everything down. They chickened out and they left. But in general, you know, she was a very specific case. I was very proud of her. And she just remembered my words were haunting in her, haunting her in her head. And it was great. But in general, what can you do? So I always told people that even if you are the supervisor, even if you are the leader of the pack or whatever you want to call it of that particular shift and somebody comes in and tries to do this to you, just as soon as somebody buys something small with a big bill, just shut your drawer, slow everything down. And if they keep trying it, Just tell them, I can't give you that kind of change. I've got to call my supervisor. 
So even if you are the supervisor, just make something up and say you're going to call somebody else. Because the second you start getting other people involved, they're out. They just bolt. So that's all you got to do is just recognize it's happening, slow everything down, shut your drawer so no money is taking place. Because sometimes they'll just reach right in your drawer. If, they're, if they think they're not scamming you properly, they'll just reach right in. They'll distract you, or the second person with them will distract you. They'll just reach right in out of desperation if they can't just scam you straight up. So first thing is, shut your drawer. Say, I'm sorry, I can't help you with the kind of chains. i got to call my supervisor. And who cares what the policy is about change or whatever it is? You know what's about to happen to you. And if it doesn't, if they just happen to be legit and they're just asking really weird questions for some weird reason, then worst case scenario, you get somebody over there and they stick around and the transaction's legit. But most of the time, small item, big bill, start asking questions about change. It's a quick change. Shut it down. All right, so that's one of my success stories about one of my cashiers shutting it down. But let me just tell you a little personal story. We had this father and son duo, duo that quick changed all over our retailer, every retailer in this town. And they would actually travel. We're in Nebraska. They would travel to Iowa. They would travel other places. And it was a father-son. And they were hitting us for years. And each time, 100 bucks here, 200 bucks here, they were just into all of us for a lot of money. So even though we had all these crimes against them, you know, they were spaced out enough that it was hard to prosecute them for an old one when they came back in. Plus, they would always come in when we're not there. Well, I was working in Council Bus, Iowa one night, and these two people came in. It was the first time I actually ever saw them in person. And again, it's so hard to prove these are happening and that they actually scammed you, and you can't have them arrested unless they get away with it. So I saw them come in, and it was one of the most exciting nights of my life. I knew I wasn't going to be able to have them arrested. But the face-to-face -face interaction I was about to have with them is what I wanted to do with them for years. And so I saw them. The second I saw them, they went straight to the registers. And I went straight out. And I was in plain clothes as a loss prevention person. I stood behind them, kind of waited for them to start their spiel just because I kind of wanted to hear it for the first time. And the poor cashier was looking at me, look, standing there. They knew exactly what was going on. And then once I saw that they started to do their thing, it's one of the most unprofessional moments of my loss prevention career because I just laid into these two. All this built up angst, but you know, I couldn't help it. We had been waiting for them for years to come in. So I was using expletives I shouldn't be using. It was it was bad. But anyway, I got to look dad in the eye, which I had wanted to do for years. And he looked at me like, who is this plain clothes dude that's just yelling at me? I was like, so I explained to him, you know, you're not gonna scam us today in in words that were a little more colorful, but he knew I was serious. And the fact that I got to scare the out of him was fantastic. So even though he didn't really get away with it, even though I didn't get him arrested, just the fact that I finally had that moment with him kind of gave me a little justice, but they might still be at it. That was, I don't know, 10 years ago. That father and son, they had been doing it for years, and they just traveled up and down the interstate and did it all the time. And they weren't the only ones, but they were they were the, probably the most famous. So I wonder if they're still at it. So anyway, loss prevention training. Hopefully this helps you loss prevention professionals out there, anybody that's training, anybody that's about to get into the game. So many different ways that these thieves can scam you, but quick change is a big one, and a lot of times it's overlooked. Um, and they can get you for a lot of money. Now, hopefully, as we go into the digital wallets with Apple Pay and all that, maybe the cash interaction will slowly but surely go away. But until it does, quick change is always a possibility. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully you kind of know how to fight it now and prevent it from happening in the future. So if you like this video, smash the like button. Silver Hammer Surveillance, Security, Loss Prevention, Smart Home, all wrapped into one. You're going to get videos from us for all of them. So again, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, come back for the next one. Until then, peace and love.